Hello, lovely ladies, and welcome to Zion's Company of Women podcast. I'm Lana. And I'm Courtney. And it's wonderful to have you with us today. Hey, Courtney, my friend. Good evening. How are you? Hey, Lana. Good morning. I am great. How are you doing? I am. I am good. I'm doing good. I'm excited this morning for we're at a new season. Like, well, that's prophetic, isn't it? <laughs> I feel like we're in a new season already, spiritually, and I feel like we're in, we're in, well, I don't feel like we are. We're about to start a new season, aren't we? The podcast. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yep. Season five, season of grace. I can't wait to see. Wait, it is season five, right? Correct? Season right. five. Right. Yeah. I okay. <laughs> I was like, I'm like, I think, think so. Huh? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> 2023 just kind of flew by so <laughs> I know. yes yes so exciting oh, it's gonna be really good I am just I'm really excited I mean I'm excited every time we sit in this mm -hmm. space right but oh what we're about to dive into in this season is like it's one of my favorites and yeah. I just I'm so expectant for what the Lord's gonna do so it's gonna be yeah, it's going to be good. And today, yeah. as we record, you may, ladies, hear the symphony of my family in the background. Uh, this morning, they are all in the living room watching a movie. So we shall see how we go. You may hear a few cheers and a few yay as they're watching whatever <laughs> they're watching. But, you know, that's real life and I wouldn't change it. So no, not for a second. Sounds of life and joy and children it's always a wonderful thing and you know I love that you talked about us being in a new season already Lana because it's it's a new season of podcast yes mm -hmm. um but it's also March and yeah. you and I have been talking so much about March and the coming of March mm -hmm. feeling like it's almost felt like the start of a new year yeah. at least in, in my and for me in the spirit that's sort of what that's felt like Mm -hmm. Um, and I can't wait to get into John 15 because we've been talking about it. You and I have been talking mm -hmm. about this for a couple of weeks now, just waiting and watching this day approaching like, man, I cannot, I cannot wait to see what it is that the Lord wants to pour out through this podcast in particular. Mm -hmm. Um, he's always talking about this type of thing, but yeah. he has been particularly specific about yeah. this passage of scripture, passages mm -hmm. of scripture that we're going to be covering. And I think part of it is because this is so much his heart. Yeah. Um, and there's just something so sacred about that. Yeah. And I, I, I completely agree. And like we were saying before we came on here this morning to start recording, like there is something like he's always speaking, you're right, about intimacy and union and communion and abiding because, yeah, that's his heart. But gosh, there's such a, a weight isn't there like there's a weight in the invitation um, to come deeper um, that I'm feeling as well as we dive yeah. into this. And I love that you use that word sacred because that's exactly, exactly how I feel. Yeah. Um, so and and because the Lord is fun and he loves to confirm his word, like I, I'm just seeing John 15 everywhere. Like I listened <laughs> to something last night and and it was John 15 again. And I was like, there's John 15. Like it's just the Holy Spirit is speaking. So yeah, definitely good. practically shouting. Yeah, I can't. So, so we're, we're not going to get uh, too deep into the passage today, although we are going to dig just like we did on our previous podcasts. We're going to dig into the, the verses that we do cover today and really sit and savor and kind of, you know, make sure we get all of the meat off of the bone, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> Uh, for the two verses that we are going to be covering. So, uh, you know, today we're starting just beginning John 15, and we're going to cover verses 1 and 2. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to read it today out of the Passion Translation, but I do have my New King James here as well. I'm not sure if you are going to read it out of a different version or not, Lana, but... Yeah, I've got the yeah, answer. Amplified. Yeah, okay. amplified. Yeah. So we'll cover all the bases <laughs> today. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it's just going to be interesting. So if it's okay with you, I'd like to just go ahead and start. Yes. Let's read the two verses and then let's dive in to uh, so what the Lord's been saying. So, okay, John 15. Uh, in my Passion Translation, this section is titled Jesus the Living Vine. 
Uh, 15 verse one, I am a true sprouting vine and the farmer who tends to the vine is my father. Verse two, he cares for the branches connected to me by lifting and propping up the fruitless branches and pruning every fruitful branch to yield a greater harvest. Mm. There is a lot wrapped up in those two precious verses. And, Mm. you know, it's interesting because I sat down with my kids the other day um, and we were reading and I just felt, and let's just jump into John 15, because why not? That's where I've been. (laughs) That's where I've been. It's such a a right now word. Um, Mm. And as we started as I started to read this to them and we started to kind of talk about it, Holy Spirit very clearly said to me, Courtney, do you know why I use uh, parables or metaphors? And I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, like in theory, I know Lord, but what is it that you want to say? (laughs) Tell me, (laughs) tell me more. Uh, And he said to me, it's, it's because part of what Holy Spirit does in these, in these moments where Jesus is, is, painting a metaphor, he's giving us a metaphor, or he's painting a symbolic picture for us is is that he's actually helping us to develop a mindset, a frame of mind or a lens or a way that we approach him more. Um, It's not just that one specific example. He's helping us to see his nature and how it is he, how, how he is and who he is. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is one of my favorite ways of seeing him and understanding him is in this first verse where Jesus says he's the sprouting vine and the farmer who tends to the vine is the father, yeah. um, the farmer, yeah. that loving, loving farmer, that loving father. So I just, mm-hmm. that's the first thing that caught my attention when I first started this passage. Yeah. I love that. My friend, it, it's really, um, it, it really goes in line with like exactly um, what I was feeling when I read these first two scriptures because um, if you had have asked me as a 16-year-old girl what type of tone would I believe the Lord would use if he was talking about pruning, um, it wouldn't have been a tone that I hear in John 15. Like mm-hmm. for me as a young believer, I would always associate pruning with um, like God is angry or he or I've done something wrong and he needs to cut it off and like get rid of it because he's displeased. And as I've journeyed with the Lord and he's discipled me in his love over how many years, I'm in my 40s now, right? I got saved when I was <laughs> so that's, that's a while. Um, I read these two verses and the first thing that really hit me was the tone of the Lord. Like as mm-hmm. I read, and I, I read, I am the true vine. Uh, my father is the vine uh, dresser. Every branch you meet, it does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that continues to bear fruit, he prunes so that it will, what, bear more fruit. And uh, and when I read these now as a believer who's walked with the Lord for a while, I go, my goodness, the tone of the Lord in these two verses is one of tenderness and one of love. And it communicates the heart of God to me and the heart of the Father so clearly in these verses because it redefines for me um, as, a, as, a, as a more mature believer now um, that, that conversation around pruning. So it's actually, you know, for um, it's to enhance the fruitfulness. It's for my good. And so while I I read these scriptures, I'm like, wow, Lord, like there's a tenderness in his tone that I can hear um, in these verses, which really impacts me because of my journey and my experience of first coming to the Lord and feeling like that whole conversation of pruning is uh, wasn't a pleasant one. Um, so, yeah, so that's yeah. kind of where I would start, that the, the tone of the Lord yeah. in these two verses is one of tenderness. Yeah, very yeah. much so. And 
Um, you know, that verse 15, one actually references Isaiah 11, one, and I would like to read it just because I really love reading these cross references so we can see this beautiful picture of the word. Um, Isaiah 11, one is titled the branch of the Lord. The cut off stump of Jesse will sprout and a fruitful branch will grow from his roots. The spirit of Yahweh will rest upon him. The spirit of extraordinary wisdom the spirit of perfect understanding, the spirit of wise strategy, the spirit of mighty power, the spirit of revelation, and the spirit of the fear of Yahweh. He will yeah. find his delight in living by the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Wow. It says in the footnotes, because I read that out of the Passion Translation, and it says in the mm -hmm. footnotes, um, the Hebrew word for branch or twig is netzer, literally meaning to grow green. The root word for Nazarene, Nazarite, and Nazareth, that's the root word for all of those. So Christ is both the root and the offspring of David. This means that the branch that grows from the roots, which would represent his spirit or his nature, points to the body of Christ, his church on the earth. Christ in us is the vine, and we are his fruitful branches. Jesus Christ branches out through his people and grows from his root. Overcomers are the branches that bring forth the fruit of Christ's life. This sprout will grow to become the rod of God's power. Wow. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> <That's amazing. laughs> you know. <laughs> okay, Lord. <laughs> wow. I, I almost had to lay down there when it says uh, he will find his delight in living by the spirit of the fear of the Lord. I was like, whoa, here we go. Yeah. This is, uh, is going to be good. Yeah. But yeah, I love that. I've never, I don't know that I, I, I love this picture too, where he's, we're talking about the fruitful branches, mm -hmm. but then he says here in the footnotes, the sprout will grow to become the rod of God's power. Mm -hmm. And I think that the hour that we're in Lana and the things that are happening within the church, there's a shaking. Yes. But part of that, part of that is bringing forth the strength that's Part of it is calling us to that place of power, mm. of real true identity mm -hmm. and who we are as his bride. Um, and so I think that those, those things that we're seeing, I mean, they go, unfortunately, unfortunately, they go hand in hand. Mm. Um, pruning always doesn't necessarily feel great. Um, but again, I think in these passages, it's interesting to look at pruning in the light of how it's seen because it says here that he prunes every fruitful branch yes. he's not cutting and hacking away at fruitless branches it's the ones that are fruitful mm -hmm. that are pruned because it's part of part of that is putting energy towards and energy into the things that are good that are meant to bear more fruit it's like mm -hmm. um i think i shared this when we were we were teaching on whole woman together the other day mm -hmm. Um, I love peach trees. I grew up in Texas. Mm -hmm. Peach trees are a big mm -hmm. thing here in Oklahoma. And I was doing a little bit of research about them in general. One of the things they say is at certain points, you need to reduce the number of peaches that you have in a cluster, because if you don't, what you'll mm -hmm. end up having is a lot of little hard fruits that are not, mm -hmm. they don't taste good. They're not the peaches that we think of where they're mm -hmm. big and juicy and delicious and wonderful. So you actually have to prune things. You have to take mm -hmm. them down so that what you actually produce is full. It's got fullness to it. It's got strength to it. It's a directing of energy into certain things mm -hmm. to make them full. So uh, there's an aspect there of that too, that when we continue to read about pruning as we go further along, we'll mm -hmm. see a little bit more, but he's setting the stage here for the tone of pruning. Yeah. This is not something that is done because you're displeasing and it's not something mm -hmm. that's done to hurt. That's yeah. not the intention. That's the intention right. is because you are pleasing. You have strength. Like there's a strength there that needs to be channeled into something even mm -hmm. more so that mm -hmm. the fruit and the result of that is even more wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think as well, like how many times in life have you know, I, I, like I'll speak for myself, like I've experienced times where the Lord has pruned things in my life that aren't necessarily bad, right? They're not bad things. Like he's like, okay, so I'm just going to like 
prune that back now or we're going to shift this or we're going to move this. And at the time you can be like, oh, my gosh, Lord, like what are you doing? But it's <laughs> unto something, right? It's And it's always unto um it's unto good, it's unto growth, it's unto fruitfulness. And um, and so I think that, yeah, like understanding that conversation of pruning, we have to understand the heart of the Lord. Like what is his heart? And it's always, um, yeah, it's always for our good. It's to mature us. It's to cause us to grow and stretch us and, you know, all of those wonderful things that the Lord loves to grow us up into. Um, and I wanted to point out here as well, I loved um, in the Passion, is this the Passion? Let me just check. Yeah, in the Passion translation, um, where does it say it? And I read it here where it says in verse 2, um, he cares for the branches connected to me by lifting up and propping up the fruitless branches and pruning every fruitful branch to yield a greater harvest. I love this because I originally when I first read this, when I first got the Passion Translation, I was like, oh, like he li he cares for branches connected to me by lifting up and propping up fruitless branches. And I was like, oh, that's really interesting. And then my eyes look down at the footnotes. And what does it say? Brian Simmons has written here, the Greek phrase can also be translated, he takes up to himself every fruitless branch. He doesn't remove these branches, but he what? Takes them to himself. As the wise and loving farmer, he lifts them up off the ground. This is so cool. To enhance their growth. In mm -hmm. the context, Christ's endless love for his disciples on the last night of his life on earth seems to emphasize God's love even for those who fall, uh, sorry, who fail and disappoint him. Peter's denial didn't bring rejection from Jesus. And that, like, to me, again, Courtney, just really speaks to me of the heart of the Lord and the love of God. Like, even those fruitless branches, he lifts them and props them up and brings them to himself. And mm -hmm. then you think of, like, even, you know, Peter's denial, like, Peter's denial didn't bring rejection from Jesus. Right. Like, far out like that's pretty massive you know um and so as we kind of sit in this space and we talk about yes like the tone of the lord the tenderness of his heart what you were just speaking then about the fear of the lord and um and the power of god in all of it in every part that we've kind of talked about already what i hear is this that scripture like in Acts where it says in him I live and move and have my being, you know, like and as I live in this place where I recognize who he is and I live in the fear of the Lord, in the wonder and awe and majesty of God, then that brings context to every part of my life, every process of my life. What do I mean by that? When I'm in that pruning place, like in the Amplified, it actually says in verse 2, he repeatedly prunes. So hello, yeah. right? We're not talking like, about like a one-time, yeah. one-off, okay, that hurt, but I'm good now, it's over. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. Like 10 years ago I was pruned and thought I was going to die, but since then, oh, I've been all good. <laughs> like you know those repeated yeah. the repeated pruning and especially um, in the context of this season, like we are in a season where where the Lord is, he's revealing his majesty, he's revealing his fiery love, but he's also revealing himself as the all-consuming fire. There is this real, um, yeah, like this fire of God that is he's igniting all the right places and he's, he's, he's consuming all the, the places that are, are not of him. Um, in that process, in this season, it can feel really gritty and it can feel really intense. And I just think that when we're in these really intense seasons of pruning and refiner's fire, if we're not in the place where we really understand the heart of the Lord, like the why, I like to ask that question, what's the why behind, not in a faithless way, 
but right. in a Lord, school me in your ways. Like, why, what, what are you doing right now? What are you actually right. doing in my life that the fire is so intense? I have never heard the Lord say, because I am so displeased with you. And I'm like, you know what? Even in the Lord's dealings, if you want to call it that, um, there's always the word of like, of hope and life and even the hard places like mm -hmm. I'm dealing with my house. Why? To return my bride unto my heart, to bring my bride back to first love. So in every season, in every process, I guess, of purifying that we walk through or or, or um, pruning, I think, Courtney, it's really under, uh, really important that we understand God is for us and he loves us. And it's all for not only for his glory, but it's so you can commune with him in a deeper yeah. way. Yeah. And I, I think that I could feel the weightiness on this um, this section of scripture today before we, we jumped on here. And the Lord was just explaining, like, this is my heart. And there, there's a reason why there's a weight to this. And, and part of that too, Lana, is because he has been misrepresented in yeah. many ways. Um, yeah. And some things at times have been twisted or they've been turned and just just enough to make it seem as though he is something that he's not or yeah. he is a way that he is not. Uh, and I think that that is part of the dealings that yeah. are happening right now is a that clarity is coming. The cleaning of the glass is coming, um, mm -hmm. is here so that yeah. his people, his children, his bride can fully look upon him in the fullness of the beauty of who he really is. And mm -hmm. again, the nature that we're talking about, the nature of the father, he's that tender vine dresser. He's the one that's walking through. Like if you can picture a vineyard and there's all these rows of, of vines and he's walking through tenderly looking, how's this one doing? How's that one doing? Mm -hmm. And if something is low and it's on the ground and it's in the dust the only thing that needs to be in the dust is the enemy. Yeah. The Lord takes it and picks it up, yeah. literally lifts it up. Because like, if you know, if you garden long enough or you're just aware of um, horticulture or whatever, uh, vines, they climb. Mm. They, they're meant to hold on to something. Mm. They're not meant they're not designed to be, you know, crawling along in the dust. They like to be up, especially, I mean, like fruiting vines, many, many like to be up. Um, mm -hmm. And that's part of how they are able to bear fruit. So yeah. for the Lord to come along and see one in the dust and say, that one needs to be taken up, that needs to be lifted up. It's because he understands that there's a need underneath there mm -hmm. that the person, the individual, whoever it is, needs something in order to be lifted up so that they can bear fruit. Because a lot of times, you know, the enemy wants to push us down, wants us to be down in the dirt, our eyes down, our eyes not up, um, looking at something. But as the branches um, mm -hmm. and as being attached to the vine, we're meant to hold on to something. We're meant to be lifted up so that we can bear fruit. Um, and I listened to a sermon the other day by Joseph Prince, which was so beautiful. And he was talking about this in particular, about how mm -hmm. vines will often, you know, they'll branch around something because they need to hold on to something. And many mm -hmm. times they will, they will kind of branch around one another. And I think what a beautiful picture that is too of us as believers and as the church that we are to yeah. hold on to one another, um, walk with one another as we walk with Christ. So again, there's that metaphor of, what is this bringing as a, how is this helping us with a mindset? Like what mindset are you picturing or are you wanting us to have here, Lord? And a lot of that, I think, just like we said in the beginning, is that place of Christ being the vine. He's the source. We stay connected with him. But the father is the one that's walking through lifting, lifting, lifting. And and I, <laughs> it's not lost on me that this passage or this section of scripture might make some people feel uncomfortable. Um, mm -hmm. And that's okay. Because when we're uncomfortable, we're growing and we're stretching. Yes. Um, yes. But, you know, some translations have interesting ways of, of saying these, these two verses. And I know that the passion, I love the way that the passion translation explains it and words it. Um, in my new King James verse two, it says, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. 
Now in my little side notes there, it has a little note here where it says uh, with the phrase, he takes away. So every branch that does not bear fruit, he takes away. There's a little number next to it and it says, or lifts up. Yes. So I did a little bit of a dive, Lana. I was like, okay, let's go back to the original. Mm -hmm. Like, let's go look at the Greek. Let's look at Strong's and figure out what, what exactly is going on here. Yeah. Um, for those of you that are the scholars, you like to dig in a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's uh, Strong's number 142. And the Greek word is, I don't know if I'm going to say this correctly, so just forgive me. <laughs> it's A-I-R-O, arrow. Um, and it's the same word that the 10 lepers used when they lifted up their voice to call out to Jesus. It's the same word that uh, it says where Jesus came to the tomb in John 11, where he came to raise Lazarus, where it says that Jesus lifted up his eyes to the Lord. Um, and there's, there's so many examples of this, Lana, but, but the number one primary root word means to lift up. Mm. So to look up, to lift up, to take up, take yeah. up your mat. That's that word. Take up your bed and go pick up your things, mm. pick them up, pick, pick up the branches, draw them up off the ground um, and bring them up to the place where they can be fruitful. So um, wow. again, there's some, just some clarity for that. I wanted to just share that a little bit because it does mm. sort of change that one little phrase, understanding what's the intention behind that? How is that being used? What's, mm. what's really being in that I think helps us to understand the heart of what's being said in yes. that passage in particular. Yeah, that's powerful. Wow, that's powerful. And as you're um, sharing, I, I just, I'm like, gosh, again, like I just, I, I keep saying the same thing, but it's because I just, again, I keep being overwhelmed again by like the Lord doesn't leave us where, where we are right? Mm -hmm. Like he's always so committed to our growth and to us. Like, you know, like even if you're down in the dust, like he doesn't just walk past and go, see ya, right? Like what does the Bible say? While we were yet sinners, Christ died for mm -hmm. us. Like, you know, again, Courtney, like in what you just shared there so beautifully, like I was, gosh, just gripped again by the heart of the Lord. Like he is so, um, committed to us growing up into uh, our relationship with him, like that we're, we're constantly flourishing in communion with him, but also growing up into who he's created us to be. And I read a, um, a quote last week by Chris Vallotton and I was like, yes, that's exactly what I've been feeling. But it was something along the lines of God is more committed. Hang on, can I quickly find it? Let me see. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to. Um, I just don't want to misquote him. Uh, here we go. Let's see if I can find it quickly. Um, yes, here we go. The Lord is more concerned about the depth of our relationship with Him than the direction of our purpose. And when I read that, I just. I read it and went, oh, like, again, it speaks to me of the Lord's heart for intimacy. It speaks to me about the Lord's heart for that place of communion. And I and I know we're not into the rest of John 15 yet, so I'm not going to go in there. But just even when I was listening to you just sharing then, again, like I feel the heart of the Lord, like I'm pruning or... Um, you know, I, I repeatedly prune or I lift up branches unto myself, like I believe so that we can flourish in our communion with him and then we can mm -hmm. sprout and we can stretch out and shine the light of Jesus, right, and, and, mm -hmm. and the gospel. Um, but the other thing is, Courtney, when you were sharing, um, I kept, my eyes kept going down to the footnotes here in the Amplified Bible and I love what it says here for verse 2 where it says every branch in me and it, that's all it says in the footnotes full stop then it says the emphasis of in me in this passage is on deep that word I circled it deep abiding fellowship Jesus's purpose was to move his disciples from servants to friends. Now, I'm not going into that because that's at the end of the passage. Um, <laughs> this would involve a process um, where we see pruning, 
This word carries the sense of purging. Once the fruit is on the vine, the vine dresser cleanses the fruit of bugs and diseases. The spiritual counterpart is cleansing, which is done through the word. And when I read that, um, I immediately felt like the Lord took me back to a scripture that um, has really been on my heart lately. And I want to read it to you. Um, it's in the book of Revelation. And I think it's verse uh, chapter 2. Let me just find it. Uh, chapter 2, verse 5. Now, this is pretty full on, this scripture, right? This is like in the, in the Passion Translation, the language here is quite full on, but like just come with me. So it says, <laughs> think about how far you have fallen. Repent and do the works of love that you did at first. Now, this verse has really been on my heart for a while, but the reason I'm bringing it up is um, in the Passion Translation, in the notes, it says, return to your passion for me that mm -hmm. motivated you at first. Mm -hmm. And when I read verses 1 and 2 of John 15, especially in light of the season that we're in right now, Courtney, I hear the sound of the Lord returning us back to the basics. I'm going to say it again. Like I feel like the Lord is returning us back to his heart. And I ask the question again, Lord, why are you highlighting John 15 again? This is the living, active, breathing word of the Lord. So it is always alive. But there is a particular emphasis on this passage right now for this season. And I'm like, God, why? And I just, I feel so strongly, my friend, just that invitation for us to return um, to that place of, you said it before, like he may have been misrepresented. He has in some ways in the church. And I feel like even those first couple of words, like every branch in me or um, I am is in capitals in my um, Amplified Bible, like there is a returning to the um, not only to first love fire, not only to um, the returning to the passion for him that motivated me at first, I see that hand in hand with the pruning, like the pruning, God is pruning and he's lifting, like he's pruning good stuff, but he's also lifting up the branches unto himself that have been fruitless uh, it, for something, for a purpose, because yeah. there is a returning um, to his heart so that, like you read in Isaiah um, and then you read in the footnotes about being, I think that you said the lightning rods of his power, like his church is like where to carry his power and where to walk in that power of God and be the city on the hill and all of those things he's called us to be. Um but in order for us to be what he's called the church to be, we have to be people that understand what abiding truly is. Like John 15, this is the Christian life. Like this mm -hmm. is bottom line intimacy. That's where everything else flows from. And so I just, yeah, I feel, if you can't tell, <laughs> I feel <laughs> the weight of um, this passage. Mm -hmm. for right now there's a even in verse one and two I hear that encouragement of the father's heart that if you're feeling like yeah like I've got fruitless branches in my life Lord or whatever it might be that there is a move of his spirit right now to enhance your growth and to return you back to and deeper into his heart yeah yes yes like I wish we could just <laughs> pause here for a moment because there's so much that you just shared in that Lana that is just it's booming from heaven like you mm -hmm. say it's it's um it's a call it's a call unto himself it's a call to wake up pay attention but it's a call to come close um and you know I was thinking I was like pondering like why this same as you were why this passage why now and then I thought, well, it makes complete sense. Um, there were a couple years ago, the Lord was explaining to me, he said, Courtney, this is this move that's mm -hmm. here is the move of the father, yeah. which would explain why we're seeing things come clean, 
and yeah. come right. Like I, I keep thinking of that phrase, like wait till your father gets home because it's <laughs> <laughs> like, I know that's taken yeah. like in a bad way, you know, yeah, cause yeah, it's yeah. like punishment is coming or whatever, but, yeah. but I see it as in, as in like uh, accounts are being aligned. Um, yeah. Things are coming into alignment, like truth is coming um, mm -hmm. and, and things are going to be dealt with um, in a way that brings justice, that brings, um, yeah, what's the God, what am I seeing? Yeah, it brings justice. It brings uh, uh, like order. Yeah. Is yes, order, justice, like clarity. Yeah. There's like yeah. a clarity of yes and no. Mm -hmm. um, and he explained that, that the, well, he said two of the spirits that will rise up, that will try to rise up in this hour are religion and mm -hmm. an orphan spirit. Yeah, because those two don't understand um, or they war directly with something like love, the love and the acceptance and the faithfulness and the steadiness of the father heart, the father love of God. That's just consistently. OK, you fell down. OK, you got dirty. Let me dust you off. Let's let's get you cleaned up and let's get you back out there. Let's lift you back up. Let's fill you up so that you can let's feed you good food so that you can go and do the things so you can produce what it is that I've designed you to do to produce. Um, and the thing that kept coming to my mind, too, in all of that, as I was listening to you, Lana, and then as I was processing this internally, was that um, I learned in some of my reading and research is that it takes five to six years for quality grapes for wine production. Wow. five to six years the first yeah. three years you don't sometimes you don't even get grapes does it mean that it's not a vine or that it's not a, a grape mm. <laughs> no yeah. not at all it's young wow. it's immature it's mm -hmm. growing it's building the roots that it needs to so that it can pull what it needs and produce what it needs. Um, and then again, takes five to six yard years for quality grapes for wine production. And then we all know that wine is better with maturity as it mm -hmm. ages. Um, yeah. So there's an element of patience in that, yeah. an element of grace. Again, this metaphor, the picture that the Lord is painting, mm -hmm. there's grace. There's like this rhythm in it, Lana, where it's like, just mm -hmm. slow down. A minute. Yeah. Just slow down a minute and let things grow. Um, mm -hmm. And that's what I think is interesting. Like whenever, you know, we garden or <laughs> we're growing things, it might feel like we want to go out there and talk to the plants and be like, why aren't you, you know, why aren't you yeah. picking anything? <laughs> you know, hurry up. I really yeah. want some tomatoes or whatever it is. That doesn't help anything. It doesn't actually cause them to produce anything. It just gives mm -hmm. you anxiety. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it feel like it's going even slower. Um, yeah. But, you know, they can't be pressured into making something any better, but they can be nourished into yeah. producing. They can be, they can be protected. Like you said, the things mm -hmm. that don't need to be on them can be pulled off. Um, mm -hmm. They can be guarded, but they need the things that they need. Water, mm -hmm. air, sunlight, nutrients, all of those things when we start to see ourselves as that, like if we start to picture ourselves as the branches attached to the vine, mm -hmm. like breathe out a minute. Yes. Because what does the branch do? It receives. Mm -hmm. it continu it's continually pulling. It's continually receiving from the vine what it needs so that it can produce. And I, I want to go further into this chapter, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to exercise the fruit of the spirit of self-control yeah. and not, not yeah. read what I want to. But yeah. I think that there's such um part of what I'm seeing when I'm looking at that is the grace to understand. Like you were saying, there's a cleansing. Yeah. He's, it's, and I love how it says that here. It says uh verse two, and propping up the fruitless branches and pruning every fruitful branch to yield a greater harvest. Did you read the footnotes on five two where it says the Greek word for pruning? Cathario can also mean cleansing. Oh my goodness. No. Yeah. That's what it says there. Like that wow. the Greek word for pruning means can also means cleansing. So wow. it's not that the Lord is wanting to come in with his lobbers and just lob off sections of our life. Although, I mean, you know, I'm not saying that doesn't happen, <laughs> but if we think of it as in, in that terms of cleansing that he's washing 
Mm -hmm. He's cleansing. He's continually purifying. Um, yeah. Like you said, with the word, like that's a mm -hmm. whole other, that's a whole other lens shift, shift on top mm -hmm. of that as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I love what, I love that because as you're just sharing there, I feel this um, exhale mm -hmm. and I have this picture of like an apple tree, right? Like you just said, like about the grapes, like an apple tree isn't sitting there going, oh, come on, apples, come on, oh, if I just squeeze hard enough, one will like pop out of my branch. Like it, there's, there's a rest in the in the fruitfulness but I think there's also a rest in the pruning process as well there's a rest in the maturing and in everything that you were just saying I heard these words um just go through my mind and I wrote them down and it was surrender to the source and I'm like mm -hmm. yes because the so I am not the source of my fruitfulness I am not the source of my maturity sure I have a responsibility Absolutely, I have a responsibility to tend my, my garden of intimacy, to allow the words of the Lord to abide in me, all of the things we're going we're gonna to move on to. Courtney, I'm doing my best to, to <laughs> stay in self-control as well. <laughs> but all of it, it is this place where I, I surrender to the one who is the vine like you said, the one who is the source. And I surrender to also the process of the Lord for my season. Because if I'm in a season where God is, let's say, he's pruning or he is, um, he's saying rest, if I then go to try and produce, there's no grace on that because that is not, that's not my season. And I just think it's really interesting that even if we're talking about like Christ as my source in the sense of like, yes, in him I live and move and have my being, but also there are times where there's incredible fruitfulness. There are times where there are like seasons of just intense um, I feel like, you know, God, you're pruning everything. It feels like every area of my life, like you're cleaning or you're pruning, there's a refiner's fire. But in all of it, there is this rest that I believe we're meant to walk in as believers where we recognize that he is the true vine. Like without him, I, I don't have like I, I have nothing. There's no there's no life. There's no hope. There's no freedom. Like it's it's all found in him. So I love that you use the word nourish because I just, again, am brought back to this place of like whatever season that I may walk in, I'm called to, or it's my design to live in this place of rest, that he is the vine that I get all my nutrients from. And even in the seasons where I'm like, God, I can't see any fruit. There's no green little spout sprouting up out of the ground that actually beneath the surface, like he is feeding me, he is doing things that I can't see that maybe in the next season I'm going to begin to see the fruit of. And yeah. so I just, I love that you said that because I felt that exhale when you were sharing because I'm like, I know in my life I have strived to like, you know, bear fruit. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. And yeah. I think too, it's just funny. I was talking to one of my friends today about just life. We were just chatting about some things. And um, I said to her, I was like, you know, even as women, we have, um, sorry, gentlemen, if you're listening, but our bodies even have cycles. There are seasons, there are seasons of bearing children and then season of not bearing children. And um, life itself, look at the seasons of, of winter, summer, spring, fall, all of those show us that there is a time and a rhythm for life and what being fruitful looks like. You know, I remember, um, love to garden and this about this time every year, I'm so ready to get out there and do stuff and things often look quite dead right before they start to grow. Um, cause mm -hmm. it's been a long chunk of time without any, any growth, visible growth that we can see above the surface. But the Lord always told me, he said, Courtney, there's so much going on under the surface that is so important. And rest is actually part of growth. To be able to rest, you know, there are certain um, flowers that I absolutely love, tulips and different things like that, that if they don't 
get down to a certain temperature for a certain amount of time, they won't flower. So if they don't have a cold enough, and I'm not saying the Lord's giving us something cold or awful, but if they don't have a deep enough rest, mm -hmm. they won't bloom. Yeah. They won't spring up like they're supposed to at the times that they're supposed to spring up. So I love what um, it's Proverbs says that know the importance of the season that you're in mm. like that. And that comes through intimacy, through talking with the Lord and understanding, Lord, what do you want me to do right now? Yeah. Am I, am, I'm feeling really physically tired. Maybe I need to not do X, Y, and Z, right? Maybe I need to not go for a run right now. Maybe I need to sit on my couch with a cup of tea and mm -hmm. I need to look out the window and just chill and yeah. hang out with, with his presence for a while. Um, so I'm saying all that to say, to speak grace to, to people, because I think we get this idea of fruitfulness as being like, I'm, I'm, I'm producing, I'm putting things out constantly when the fruit that I think the Lord is talking about here, like that's the fruit Part of it is the fruit of the spirit, mm. you know? Um, and so I wanted to go to Galatians 5, 22 and 23, but the fruit produced by the Holy Spirit within you is divine love in all its varied expressions, mm. joy that overflows, peace that subdues. That's warfare. Mm. Peace that subdues fear, peace that subdues anxiety and restlessness, patience that endures kindness in action, a life full of virtue, faith that prevails, gentleness of heart and strength of spirit. Never set the law above these qualities for they are meant to be limitless. Yeah. Sometimes I know I have been in this position before Lana where I think like I screw up or I make a mistake and I'm like, ah, I should have had gentleness of heart there and I didn't. Mm-hmm. But even the awareness of, man, okay, that's a correction. That's mm -hmm. a cleansing. Mm -hmm. Where then I get to go repent and say, I'm sorry. Yeah. I was too harsh there and I should have been gentle with you. Will you forgive me? That's yeah. a cleansing. That's yes. a pruning. That's bringing about, that's almost instantaneous fruit. Like when yeah. you get to, I mean, like, let's think of that for a minute. When you get to repent as a mother to your mm -hmm. children, you are yeah. showing them what that looks like. That's being fruitful because yeah. they're going to need it. They're going to need to see what that, what it looks like to repent or change or apologize. Mm -hmm. They're going to need all of that. So I think I, I like this. I love this conversation too, because I think it's opening up our understanding of what does fruitfulness mean? What does that even mm -hmm. look like? Mm -hmm. And instead of just thinking, ah, oh, man, I'm failing. I'm not doing this enough. I'm not producing. Start mm -hmm. looking for the ways in which the Lord is immediately in his relationship with you, correcting and bringing that cleansing that immediately mm -hmm. is bringing forth life to those areas. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. And I hear like, as you're, you're sharing that, like I hear that um, the importance of us seeing as he sees, like it's, you know, cause if I am looking at um, my season or the or the correction or whatever like you were just sharing just there like if I'm seeing that through my natural eyes then I'm not going to see what is actually happening like what he's actually doing um, and so I love like I just feel like there is such a redefinition that happens like when we're in his presence of like you just said like fruitfulness right like what is it actually like ask him what is it what does that fruitfulness look like and I know for me so often I go well fruitfulness is gonna look like this and it's actually not like he's like no, this is what fruitfulness looks like Lana you know go take and, a bath yeah go right? chill out for a little while <laughs> Yeah. yeah, like, you know, and I just, I, I love what you just said, because even if we go all the way back, like to what we were saying at the start of this episode, that, you know, even the print, the word pruning, like, again, if I'm not seeing, like, if I'm not looking at it as he is looking at it, if I'm not looking at it through the lens of his nature and his love and who he is, or even looking at my seasons, the way that like the process of what the Lord is doing, um, then, yeah, like then it's harder to sit in that place of rest. A true rest comes from being connected to the vine, hearing his rhema word, 
uh, sitting in the logos and I'm not going to go to verse 3 and just allowing the rest <laughs> of God to, you know, that's the place where I find rest. And so, um, yeah, I just I love what you were sharing, my friend. I think that it's just it's so important that we see the way that he sees. Yeah. And we see from his perspective. Yeah. And I think that's the point. The point is to stay connected. Yes. Yes. Bear fruit. Mm -hmm. But you can't bear fruit if you're not connected. So the point mm -hmm. is to stay connected. It's not to beat yourself up. It's not to, you know, freak out when there's a mistake made or mm -hmm. if you feel like you're not producing enough. The point is that you stay connected because when you stay connected, it says here in verse two, he, meaning the father, cares mm -hmm. for the branches connected to me by lifting and propping up the fruitless branches. And where is it? It's in first Peter, what, where it says, cast all your cares upon him for he cares for you. Mm. I can't remember. What's the, I, don't know, I can't remember the exact reference now, That's, even though you. I just had, it, I just had it in my, in my mind. Now we'll find it. You can do a, a search of it. If you're listening and you want to, first, it's first five, Peter seven. That's there you go. It was first yeah. Peter. I couldn't remember if it was three or if it was five. Mm -hmm. Um, Pour all uh, your worries and stress. Yeah. 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 Pour all your worries and stress upon him and leave them there for he always tenderly cares for you. Yeah. I love that. Um, that's one that's been coming up a lot lately too, because yeah. I think we just in general as humans tend to carry too much. Um, and I've really felt like the Lord has been saying lately, I want you to pay attention to this. And when something starts to pull you and weigh you down and you're holding it so hard, release it to me. Let me care for you. When you mm -hmm. do that, you allow him. That's part of, I think that's part of that connectedness is you allow him to tend to you. Yeah. Like he's saying, give that to me because yeah. I care for you. And it's not just a care as in a oh, I love you. It's an, I'm caring, I'm tending to you. So give that to me so I can tend to you. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. There's an element in that there too, Lana, that I think is, is connected. Um, and I just love that picture. He cares for the branches connected to Jesus. Yes. And that brings us, I think, full circle back to the beginning. The very thing I think we started talking about was the tenderness of God like that we see in this in these first two verses like the tenderness of his heart and the way he tenderly cares you know that that is just it's that's beautiful and i love that you said well you didn't say it in these words but this is how i heard it that you know fruitfulness and bearing fruit it's not that's not the main point yeah. Right, like you said, the main point is is connectedness. It is knowing him. So if my focus is I have to bear fruit, I have to bear fruit, I'm going to be in this place of anxiety and unrest and striving. But if my eyes are on him and I'm beholding mm -hmm. him and I am, you know, like Jesus, you are my vine. In you I live and move and have my being. Like every day I get up and I go, I want to know you today. I want to know your heart more today. I want to hear your voice today. I want to be um, face to face with you. I want to be so close that I can feel your breath like on my cheek. Like that's how close I want to be. Like as I, I look at him, then fruitfulness is just the byproduct. Just the, it's just the fruit of my relationship with him. Like it's, it's, you know, the fruitfulness happens as we know him, right? As we're in his presence in that place of intimacy, fruitfulness just happens. Um, and so, yeah, I love this. Love this I conversation. Fruitfulness yeah. is your design. You're designed to bear fruit just like a grape fruit, a grape uh, plant, a grape vine is designed to bring forth grapes. It doesn't bring forth watermelons. It doesn't bring forth, you know, pumpkins or something else. It brings forth what it's made to bring forth, like, we are designed, we have been created to bring forth that fruit. Yes. And so when we stay connected, I love that you said that when we stay connected, that's mm -hmm. the byproduct of it yeah. is the fruit. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, I love this. So good. And I want to jump into verse three, but we're not going to in this episode. No. no. <laughs> oh, fruit of the spirit. 
Oh, gosh. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, I think we are wrapping up for, mm-hmm. unless you've got any final thoughts, my friend, for these two verses, because I am trying no. very hard to refrain myself from moving yeah. on. <laughs> I think that, I think that, that we've, you know, he's helped us set the stage here that this is the point, the point, like, let's look at him. Let's read these through the lens of a loving, a loving father of a, of a Jesus that is constantly and consistently faithful and with us, no matter what I loved what we read earlier, Peter's denial didn't bring rejection from Jesus. Not even Peter's denial brought rejection from Jesus. Sit in that for a while and see if that doesn't bear fruit yeah. in your life and within you. Um, so I think that this is a beautiful place to start and a beautiful place to stop is setting the stage of this is the father's heart and this is how we're going to approach who he is and how he deals with us as well. Yeah. So good. So beautiful. Well, lovely ladies, there you go. The first episode of our new season of John 15. My goodness. And I can tell you on behalf of Courtney and I, we are very excited about uh, the next episode and the next few verses. So thank you for joining us and we will see you next time. Bye. Hello, lovely ladies. It's Courtney from Zion's Company of Women podcast. And I want to thank you for all of your incredible support. If you've been blessed by the podcast and you'd like to see more content like this, please consider donating to support the Zion's Company of Women ministry team. Your donations make what we do here on the podcast a possibility. Just click the link in the podcast description for a variety of ways to donate, or you can donate via our webpage at zionscompanyofwomen.com. And while you're there, check out our upcoming events, as well as our brand new launch of Scribes of Zion and Zion's Company of Mothers. Thank you for all of your incredible support. And as always, God bless you.